Hello everyone and welcome back to the Bond Armory. I'm Ray Crumpold and today we're going to be taking a look at another one of James Bond's firearms. And for the first time on this channel, it's going to be a rifle. Today, we're taking a look at the Armalite Model 7 Survival Rifle. As always, I've already safety checked and emptied the firearm. So let me introduce you to the AR-7, the Armalite Rifle Model 7. Uh, this was originally developed in 1959 by Eugene Stoner over at Armalite, um, hence the moniker AR-7. Uh, same as the current production AR-15s, it's Armalite Rifle Model 15, not Assault Rifle Model 15. Whole other thing, we won't get into that. Back to the rifle. Anyway, it was first developed in 1959 by Eugene Stoner over at Armalite. After that, production uh, went over to Charter Arms, and most note, and now currently over to Henry Repeating Arms Company, which is what this one is. Uh, now, for all intent and purposes, this is the same uh, same gun. Uh, there are some different finishes and things that are out there. They are extremely rare to get one that is completely screen accurate. Um, they're just impossible to find, and when you do find them, they fetch a very, very high price. Uh, so, if you do want an AR7 of your own, Henry Repeating Arms is currently manufacturing them. You could always give it a paint job if you want. Anyway. Uh, where does this fit in with Bond? It's used in three different films. Most notably in From Russia With Love, we see it in the assassination scene. Uh, we also see Bond using it to shoot down the Spectre helicopter. Now we do see it in two other films. Uh, very briefly, we see in Goldfinger, Tilly Masterson uses the AR-7 to attempt to assassinate your Goldfinger. And then we see it very, very briefly uh, with George Lazenby in On Her Majesty's Secret Service. Now, I'm going to show you why this gun is so cool and how it breaks down and all fits into the stock. It is very Q branch, and I think that's why it was the perfect rifle uh, for James Bond. What makes the AR-7 so unique is that everything is conveniently stored within the stock itself. To assemble it, you simply take off the butt pad and you'll find all your components. You have your receiver, two magazines, and the barrel. Let's take everything out. Receiver, barrel, two magazines. Of course, you have a third magazine that's attached to the receiver already. And again, this has all been safety checked. All the magazines are empty. Let's take a closer look at the receiver. Next to the trigger, you'll find a bar, and that's actually your magazine release. Give that a push, the magazine slides right out. Double check, empty chamber. Now to assemble it, you're going to put the receiver on top of the stock and slide it into position. And then underneath, there's a little knob that you have to twist. That engages a screw, which connects to the receiver. Hand tighten. If you look on the threads, there's a little notch, and that notch is where the barrel pin goes. Slide it into position, and tighten the nut. And just like that, in under a minute, you have a fully assembled rifle. Now that you've seen the assembly, let's go to the range and shoot for accuracy. Of course, we are at Free State Gun Range. We have our target set out to 20 yards, and we'll be shooting through a box of 50 rounds to test for accuracy. Now the AR-7 is chambered in 22 long rifle, uh, which is actually one of my favorite rounds to shoot. It's fun to shoot, it's cheap to shoot, there's hardly any recoil, if any. Okay, we had a little stovepipe. I always describe it as a BB gun with a bottle rocket behind it. You can shoot all day with 22, just plinking and having a good time. One thing that started to bother me while shooting the AR-7 was actually the racking knob, that little pin that you see there on the right-hand side of the gun. Every time I would put a new mag in and I'd have to cock it back, uh, it just started to tear up my fingers after a while, 
and I ended up using a shell casing and a magazine to rack the bolt back like that. If you watch the muzzle of the rifle, you can see there's hardly any rise because 22 is such a small ram. Rear sight of the AR-7 is actually a peep design. So it's a small ring that you have to look through and then match up with your front sight, which is that blaze orange up front. I'm not a huge fan of this type of sight, but it did work very well. And you can see I'm getting frustrated with racking the knob back and just having a real difficult time with it. And another stovepipe. Now that's an issue with 22 ammunition. I, I wouldn't consider this something wrong with the rifle itself. 22 tends to be so, so mass produced that it has a lot of issues. It's a very dirty round. A lot of people complain that the AR-7 is uncomfortable to shoot because of how wide the stock is. Um, because it's used as a storage compartment, it has to be big. Um, I really didn't find that to be the case. I thought it was quite comfortable. It wasn't awkward at all. Okay, I think we're going to be doing our last magazine, and there you can see I just had enough racking that back. Alright, let's bring in our target and see how we did for accuracy. Not bad at all, nothing outside the 9 ring. I seem to have been shooting a little bit low. And I guaranteed this grouping would have been much tighter had I been using a bench rest or something like that. Again, I was just shooting from the standing position. Now let's go into some final thoughts on the AR-7. Final thoughts on the AR-7 rifle. Well, for what it is, I think it's awesome. I think it's a very cool gun. Um, it is not a battle rifle. You shouldn't be doing what I was doing at the range, shooting mag after mag after mag with it. Uh, in a real world situation, not, not practicing. Um, it's meant for hunting small game, you know, very, very high emergency SHTF type situations. So to be able to throw something like this, a full size rifle, into your book bag or the trunk of your car, if you're going on a, a trip somewhere, say up to the mountains or hiking, something like that, and you're worried about, you know, possibility of a snowstorm or any type of emergency, um, this could be the perfect answer for you. Um, I do like this as a bug out weapon, especially if you have a bug out bag or a um, 72 hour kit, something like that. Uh, 22 is a very abundant ammunition. Uh, it, and like I said at the very beginning, it's a, a very cheap ammunition too, and it's still a bullet. So to be able to throw that in your book bag and just have it there in case of an extreme emergency, I think that's really cool. And just the fact that everything folds up and goes into the stock for storage and it floats, um, that's, just, that's just cool. Uh, it's very Q, very Bond. And I think that's why they actually chose this weapon for Bond, because of that. Um, would I recommend it? Yeah, absolutely. I definitely think this is a weapon worth having. Um, the things I didn't like, like you saw, was the cocking knob. But okay, I have to add one more thing to this video a little late in the game. Anyway, like you saw at the beginning, uh, at the bottom, uh, this firearm is on loan from me from Mr. Patrick at Free State Gun Range. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, if you're ever in the area, Patrick is a super nice guy, so make sure you swing in, say hello, especially if you want to talk about shotguns. Anyway, because this rifle isn't mine, um, I didn't get that much hands-on with it. I got to shoot it twice uh, and just have it at home just to do these videos. And my biggest complaint was racking the bolt back to chamber around. The knob was just really, really small. And then somebody pointed out to me, they said, well, just like the rest of the gun, you know that that knob retracts and extends, right? No. <laughs> no, I did not know that. But check it out. Sure enough. Boom. Now this, this 
this I could do all day. That is a game changer for this rifle. Yeah, I think it's a very cool prop. If you can get your hands on one, especially one of the originals, you're gonna make me jealous. But if you get your hands on one of these, I mean, you can always paint it to be, to look more screen accurate. Uh, it's a very cool gun for what it is. It is not a battle rifle, it's a survival rifle. And it's also a Bond rifle. So, thank you very much for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe, and I will see you next time on the Bond Armory.